tutorial series for SiteFX's Project Grot. In the previous chapter, we wrapped up our tool and turned it into an HDA, with everything we need to import it into Unreal. In this chapter, we can finally play around with our tool. I'll also show you how to get Houdini Engine up and running, and how we can debug our tool using Houdini Session Sync. Let's get into Houdini! Alright, here I am in my Unreal scene. As you can see, I have my blockout mesh that my colleague has provided for me, and I'd like to use my HDA now on it and see how it works. But I guess before we get into it, we should quickly make sure that we have Houdini Engine installed. And in case you're not familiar how it works, let's go over this really quick. And feel free to skip forward if you have Houdini Engine already installed. Usually when you install Houdini through the launcher, for instance, it asks you if you want to install the Unreal Engine plugin as well. However, this doesn't mean that it's automatically inside Unreal and you have the plugin available to you. It just means that it's downloading the necessary files for you and we then have to manually place them into the right location. It's different for Mac and for Windows. Um, I'm guessing most of you are going to use Windows. And in that case, you have to go to your side effects installation folder and find the Houdini engine folder, search for the correct Houdini version as well as the correct Unreal version. In there, there should be a folder called Houdini engine. And then you copy this one and you have to paste it in your Unreal engine installation folder. So you go to your Unreal installation path, find the right Unreal engine version, go to plugins, runtime, and then paste it in there. For Mac, you have to go to SideEffects GitHub page, find the right version for your Houdini version. So in my case, I'm currently using Houdini 2724. So I'm gonna look and here's Houdini engine for Houdini 20.0724. And then we can open up this dropdown and I want it for Unreal Engine uh, 5.4. And because I have a silicon Mac, I need the ARM64 zip file. When you've downloaded it, um, you can unpack it and then you should also get this Houdini engine folder that I mentioned earlier. And we need to copy it into our Unreal Engine installation folder as well. And on Mac, it's in Users, Shared, Epic Games, your Unreal Engine version, Engine, Plugins, Runtime, and then you paste it in here. And then hopefully everything should work just fine. And when you start your engine again, you should now see this Houdini engine tab in your Unreal Engine. If you see the tab, then you know the installation has worked. In case it's still not appeared, make sure to check uh, under plugins for Houdini engine. And if you can see it here, maybe the toggle is not enabled and then you can enable it and restart. And then you should see the Houdini engine tab. All right. Um, so now we have Houdini Engine installed and ready to go. And now to get our HDA into the scene, we can just go to our HDA folder. You can create this anywhere you want. We just made it here. And then you can go and get your file. So in my case, I have my Grot Ruins and I'm just gonna drag and drop it in here. And from your folder, you can just drag and drop it into the viewport. And you should now see this Houdini icon. And uh, once you let go, it's going to kick off the license uh, check and it's going to connect to your license server and hopefully everything should be OK. So now we have our HDA in the scene. And if you go over to the right side, you can see a bunch of different buttons and these buttons are always included. This is just the Houdini engine that comes with every tool. So there you can trigger the cooking process again. You can bake out your tool into a static mesh. You can set the locations. You can also fine tune how exactly the tool should operate, when it should cook or not cook. Usually I just keep the standard settings. Uh, I think it's fine. And then if we scroll down a bit further, this is where we see our UI, even with our little tab right here and um, our separator, it's all there. And if we scroll down a bit further, we can now see our input that we call blockout mesh. However, right now it's a geometry input. And what that means is it's expecting an input from our content browser. And I don't really want that. I want something from our world input. Um, so I'm gonna go over to world input. And now we have this little picker. If I press start selection, I can now click on any object in the level, several even. If we want to, we can load the entire level. But in this case, we just want the ruins and then press use current. So now the blockout has been sent to our tool. But of course, nothing has happened because we haven't painted the vertex colors yet, right? So I'm just going to hide the tool 
and go back to the block out and then from selection mode I'm gonna switch over to mesh paint and as I said in the first chapter Unreal usually starts out with a flat white color everywhere and we're just gonna paint a bit of black where we want the destruction to happen so I don't know for instance here and here just paint over here. The cool thing is we can always go back and change it. That is the nice thing about about using procedural tools like Houdini. I'm happy with this, I think. I'm gonna go back to selection, hide our block out, turn on our HDA again, I'm gonna go back up and press recook. And nothing happened. So why is that? Well, what we've encountered is a bug. These pesky bugs are gonna become something you're gonna be dealing with on a daily basis uh, as a Houdini tech artist. And I thought I'd sneak one in just for fun. What do we do in this case? I mean, we could go back to, uh, to Houdini and open up our tool and start to try and figure out what it is. But there's a really cool debugging tool we can access from Unreal Engine called Houdini Session Sync. So we can just click on this and open it up. And you'd be surprised to see that Houdini Session Sync is actually just Houdini. Because one thing you should know about Houdini Engine is Houdini Engine is just Houdini, but it's running invisibly in the background. And by opening up Houdini Session Sync, we are turning this invisible session into a visible one. And basically we're peeking behind the curtain and seeing what's going on, what data is being sent back and forth. And we can even change the code live. To see what's going on after loading up, press recook one more time to load our data over. And if you can't see anything, press F and then you should see the ruins there. And you can see that our origin is all the way over here and we are literally in the world space now of Unreal Engine. And usually there will be a node that has the name of our HDA such as Grot Ruins 1.0. And if we go inside, we can see that it is actually our HDA, the one we just created. And if we double click inside, we can see that it is even literally the graph we just created. But we can't access it now, it's all grayed out and if we try to click something it says permission denied. And the reason for that is because we have this little gray lock here, but we can open the lock by pressing right click, allow editing of contents. And this is where the real magic happens, because now we can actually edit the graph while we are still in Unreal. I'm not kidding. So, for instance, if I wanted to, I could go over here to our output and I could just put the pig head there and just plug it in. If I go back to Unreal, the pig head is already there. It's literally happening as soon as you place it down. So this is a silly example, but I hope you get the idea that we can literally change code on the fly and that means we can also bug fix live so let's see where is this bug coming from i would just start at the top where our data is coming in and we can see this is the paint that we just made and then we can go to the next one and oh and now we see suddenly the paint is disappearing so what's going on there for the eagle eyed you might have noticed that on the first note we didn't see any color in our point attributes although we're seeing color over here and that is because Unreal Engine stores vertex colors in the vertices not in the points. So what that means for us is that well our code that turns the color into a mask attribute is expected to run over points and so it's expecting the color attribute to be a point attribute and that's why nothing is happening and that's also why no mask attribute is being created and why everything that's following after is gonna fail so all it takes is one little bug to make the entire tool fail so what can we do to fix that well the good news is it's a very easy fix all we have to do is drop an attribute promote in front of the attribute wrangle and simply say we want to promote the color attribute from vertex to point. And you can already see that my computer is starting to load because now it's kicking off the actual process. So the bug has been fixed. And if I go back, I can see, well, there's a pig head. <laughs> but now that it's been loaded, I can now see that the runes have been loaded as expected. And don't forget to save your HDA when you're done editing it in session sync. So now we've fixed the bug and already saved the update. All right, so this is great news. The tool is working as intended. It's looking a bit weird, but that's just because we're not in detail mode and our material isn't uh, loading, but that's fine. I mean, if you want to, we can also fix that easily by going back to 
our session sync and then grabbing our Unreal material, the one for the concrete, go and copy, paste. We can just give it to the preview mesh. And if I go back, then, well, we don't see concrete. We see nothing because we haven't supplied a material yet. But it seems that the functionality is now there. The way that we can now apply a material is by opening up our content browser, we can just drag and drop the material. And you can see that as I'm dragging it, these two parameters, the concrete and flesh material paths have uh, now this blue highlight on it. And that means that they are receptive to a material input. So if I let go of my, of my material, now it's being applied. But of course, because we don't really have any information on it, well, it's a bit underwhelming, the result. <laughs> but we're going to see it once we switch over to the detail mode. But still, I'm going to already supply the, the flesh material. So here we have the ruins flesh. I'm also going to drag that in here. Maybe we want to have the outer shell be a bit thicker. So this is something we can do. I don't know, maybe make it a bit over a meter thick. Ah, yeah, that looks much more like what we had. It seems that the structure is a lot larger than what we had in our block out. So I'm going to turn down the density. But that's a cool thing. We can just play around with whatever we want and it's all non-destructive. And I think this is the most satisfying part of making any tool is when you can just kind of play around with this thing you created. And what's even cooler is that we can now even go back to our mesh paint. We can hide the HDA and turn on the block out again. And, you know, I can just paint some more stuff in if I want or remove something. You know, it's we can really, we can do whatever we want. So for instance, I thought, I don't know, maybe here it was a bit too much. Uh, maybe here I want a bit more destruction. Just to prove a point, you know, I can like make this long crack over here and go back to my HDA and recook it. And here are our changes. I mean, just think about how long that would take uh, if you were to try it and do this by hand. I think I would just straight up not even try it. So yeah, so I'm just gonna play around a little bit more until I find something that I'm happy with, and then I'm gonna switch over to detail mode. Nice. Very nice. This looks creepy. It actually looks really cool the way it is with these very thin flesh strands, but I kind of want to I kind of want to make them thick over to the flesh settings and maybe set the thickness to, I don't know. Maybe let's go for it twice as thick. Yeah. Uh, even more. And as you can see, the cool thing is once we have loaded the detail mode, adjusting the flesh is really responsive because we don't have to reload the detail of the concrete anymore. Nice. And now you can also see um, the effect that our vertex colors have. So if we look closely, you can see that around the edges, we have some light edge wear. It becomes a bit stronger when we enable the unlit mode. Then you can really see it that here on the corners we have it's a bit lighter inside it's a bit darker and what i mentioned while we were working on the flesh you can see uh, how it's kind of pulsating it looks really creepy <laughs> so the last thing we just have to do is to turn this HDA into a static mesh because as nice as this looks right now we can't really use this as a final end result for instance we can't package an unreal project uh, with an active HDA because the user would require to hold a license right that's not a problem as soon as we are happy with our end result we can turn it into a static mesh and that also comes with some nice performance benefits that come along with static meshes in unreal so we could also enable nanite on that and and so on and so forth and to do that we just have to go over to our uh, houdini engine ui and press bake and this will now save a copy into our bake folder the standard location should be under content houdini engine bake uh, well, we can set this wherever we want. But yeah, now we have our baked static mesh. By the way, the HDA is still going to be visible. So we can just uh, disable that. We can just hide that. And then uh, here we have our baked static mesh. So that's it for, for the ruins tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. I hope you learned a lot. I hope it 
got you closer to the world of proceduralism, um, but we're not done yet. So if you're eager to learn more, there's more to come. In the trailer, we had a lot of nasty flesh all around, covering the scene like cobwebs and floating rocks that are holding on to the ruins. And that's what's gonna come in the next tutorial series that's all about flesh. Get ready because I have a new version cooked up that is even better than what you've seen in the trailer. I hope that's enough to pique your interest. Have a good one and hopefully see you in the next one. Bye bye!